John Ray John Ray FRS was an English naturalist widely regarded as one of the earliest of the English Parson naturalists. Until 1670, he wrote his name as John Ray. From then on, he used Ray, after having ascertained that such had been the practice of his family before him. He published important works on botany, zoology and natural theology. His classification of plants in his Historia Plantarum, was an important step towards modern taxonomy. Ray rejected the system of dichotomous division by which species were classified according to a preconceived, either slash or type system, and instead classified plants according to similarities and differences that emerged from observation. He was the first to give a biological definition of the term species. John Ray was born in the village of Black Notley in Essex. He is said to have been born in the smithy, his father having been the village blacksmith. He was sent at the age of 16 to Cambridge University, studying at Trinity College. His tutor at Trinity was James Duport, and his intimate friend and fellow pupil the celebrated Isaac Barrow. Ray was chosen Minor Fellow of Trinity in 1649, and later Major Fellow. He held many college offices, becoming successively lecturer in Greek, mathematics, and humanity, prelector, frias, and college steward, and according to the habit of the time, he was accustomed to preach in his college chapel and also at Great St. Mary's, long before he took holy orders on December 23, 1660. Among these sermons were his discourses on the wisdom of God manifested in the works of the creation and deluge and dissolution of the world. Ray was also highly regarded as a tutor and he communicated his own passion for natural history to several pupils. It has been generally asserted that Willoughby was Ray's pupil at Cambridge, but what little evidence exists on the matter is rather against this supposition. After leaving Cambridge in 1662 he spent some time travelling both in Britain and the continent. In 1673, Ray married Margaret Oakley of Launton, in 1676 he went to Middleton Hall near Tamworth and in 1677 to Falborn Hall in Essex. Finally, in 1679, he removed to his birthplace at Black Notley, where he afterwards remained. His life there was quiet and uneventful, although he had poor health, including chronic sores. Ray kept writing books and corresponded widely on scientific matters. He lived, in spite of his infirmities, to the age of 77, dying at Black Notley. He is buried in the churchyard of St. Peter and St. Paul where there is a memorial to him. At Cambridge, Ray spent much of his time in the study of natural history, a subject which would occupy him for most of his life. When Ray found himself unable to subscribe as required by the Bartholomew Act of 1662 he, along with 13 other college fellows, resigned his fellowship on August 24, 1662 rather than swear to the declaration that the Solemn League and Covenant was not binding on those who had taken it. Tobias Smollett quoted the reasoning given in the biography of Ray by William Derham. The reason of his refusal was not as some have imagined, his having taken the Solemn League and Covenant, for that he never did, and often declared that he ever thought it an unlawful oath, but he said he could not say, for those that had taken the oath, that no obligation lay upon them, but feared there might. His religious views were generally in accord with those imposed under the restoration of Charles II of England, and he continued as a layman in the established Church of England. From this time onwards he seems to have depended chiefly on the bounty of his pupil Francis Willoughby, who made Ray his constant companion while he lived. Willoughby arranged that after his death, Ray would have six shillings a year for educating Willoughby's two sons. In the spring of 1663 Ray started together with Willoughby and two other pupils on a tour through Europe, from which he returned in March 1666, parting from Willoughby at Montpellier, whence the latter continued his journey into Spain. He had previously in three different journeys travelled through the greater part of Great Britain, and selections from his private notes of these journeys were edited by George Scott in 1760 under the title of Mr. Ray's Itineraries. 
Ray himself published an account of his foreign travel in 1673, entitled Observations Topographical, Moral, and Physiological, made on a journey through part of the Low Countries, Germany, Italy, and France. From this tour Ray and Willup B. returned laden with collections, on which they meant to base complete systematic descriptions of the animal and vegetable kingdoms. Willup B. undertook the former part, but, dying in 1672, left only an ornithology and ichthyology for Ray to edit, while Ray used the botanical collections for the groundwork of his Methodus Plantarum Nova, and his great Historia Generalis Plantarum. The plants gathered on his British tours had already been described in his Catalogus Plantarum Anglii, which formed the basis for later English Floris. In 1667 Ray was elected Fellow of the Royal Society, and in 1669 he and Willup B. published a paper on experiments concerning the motion of sap in trees. In 1671, he presented the research of Francis Jessup on formic acid to the Royal Society. In the 1690s, he published three volumes on religion the most popular being The Wisdom of God Manifested in the Works of the Creation, an essay describing evidence that all in nature and space is God's creation as in Bible is affirmed. In this volume, he moved on from the naming and cataloging of species like his successor Carl Linnaeus. Instead, Ray considered species lives and how nature worked as a whole, giving facts that are arguments for God's will expressed in his creation of all visible and invisible. Ray gave an early description of dendrochronology, explaining for the ash tree how to find its age from its tree rings. Ray was the first person to produce a biological definition of species, in his 1686 History of Plants. As outlined in his Historia Plantarum, Ray published about 23 works, depending on how they are counted. The biological works were usually in Latin, the rest in English. His first publication, while at Cambridge, was the Catalogus Plantarum Circa Cantabrigium Nascentium, followed by many works, botanical, zoological theological and literary. Including the various editions, there are 172 works of Ray, of which most are rare. The only libraries with substantial holdings are all in England. P 153 The list in order of holdings is. Ray's biographer, Charles Raven, commented that Ray sweeps away the litter of mythology and fable, and always insists upon accuracy of observation and description and the testing of every new discovery. P10 Ray's works were directly influential on the development of taxonomy by Carl Linnaeus. The Ray Society, named after John Ray, was founded in 1844. It is a scientific text publication society and registered charity, based at the Natural History Museum, London, which exists to publish books on natural history, with particular reference to the flora and fauna of the British Isles. As of 2017, the society had published 179 volumes. The John Ray Society is the Natural Sciences Society at St. Catherine's College, Cambridge. It organizes a program of events of interest to science students in the college. In 1986, to mark the 300th anniversary of the publication of Ray's Historia Plantarum, there was a celebration of Ray's legacy in Braintree, Essex. A John Ray Gallery was opened in the Braintree Museum. The John Ray Initiative is an educational charity that seeks to reconcile scientific and Christian understandings of the environment. It was formed in 1997 in response to the global environmental crisis and the challenges of sustainable development and environmental stewardship. John Ray's writings proclaimed God as creator whose wisdom is manifest in the works of creation, and as redeemer of all things. JRI aims to teach appreciation of nature, increase awareness of the state of the global environment, and to promote a Christian understanding of environmental issues. Note, this is a selected list of the more influential systems. There are many other systems, for instance a review of earlier systems, published by Lindley in his 1853 edition, and Dahlgren. Examples include the works of Scopoli, Batch, and Grisebuck.